Welcome to Dwarven Forge Live. This is Wildlands Survival Guide episode 14. Yeah, I you got, got it. it. It's the first. Oh, it, it took me 14 times to get the episode done. <laughs> I think it's because we streamed last night. It's, it hasn't been like a full 24 hours. So I, the, the last night's lucky number 13 is still stuck in my head, I guess. So episode 14. Uh, we're uh, we're appear nearing the end of Wildlands, and uh, but we still have a bunch of these to go. And today we have a special guest uh, all the way from merry old England. Uh, we've got Ross Charles here. All right. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing, sir? I am very well, thank you. How are you? We are, um, uh, like I, said, I described to you yesterday, is we're riding on the back of a nightmare, of untamed yep. nightmare with flames and everything, and you're just, you know, you got a lot of momentum. You're not sure where you're going because there's a lot of smoke and fire in your eyes, but, uh, or at least you're galloping. So yep. yeah, it's moving. We're it's moving. moving. So we uh, so yeah, before we start uh, start grilling you uh, with some real real hard questions, we uh, we have some updates for our folks. What what do we have for updates, Mr. Chris? Uh, well, uh, the biggest thing is for everybody here. If you haven't uh, entered our social uh, drawing yet, yes. if you go on uh, oh hello, if we go on. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. We've got posts there that you can, uh, I believe for all of them, it's tag two friends and then share the post and you'll be entered to win $150 in pledge manager credit. Uh, that's just free money. 150 bucks to get pieces. Dwarven Knight? Like, come on, who doesn't want that? Yeah. Tag do, you have to, do you have to have public accounts to win? Uh, we have to be able to see that you're doing it. You have to, you have to hashtag it. You have to tag the people oh, yeah. and hashtag, hashtag it. The hashtag is the yeah. key because then we... we round up all the hashtags and put it in there. That's right, yeah. So we have to be able to see your account so that we can yeah. tell that you've done it. The basically. rules are on the post. Like yeah, it says. The, the rules are also on the post. There's a yeah. link to all the conditions and all that. Um, so again, that's on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. We're and the, those three. And the purpose of doing this is so we can get the word out because we've got four days left and we want, there's there's people out there that don't know the wildlands awaits them. So we tell your, tell your friends. It's, we've got also, just if you just want dice, there's dice, there's there's war game stuff. There's all sorts of nonsense, foggers and light pucks and whatever. So you know, spread it out there so we can get the la get some more people to join. Let me get this light puck. Um, what else do we have? Uh, any other bits of news? We got our uh, upcoming streams. Yeah, we've got four more streams after this one uh, by the end of the day. Um, do we tag them on the? Oh, so, yeah. So you want to tag them on the original post and then share the post. Uh, is what you want to do. So that way they can see the original and also share that post and enter if they want to. Um, yeah, so we've got four streams left after this. Uh, tomorrow at 7, we have both Hamster and Aaron on, both of our, uh, both of our team painters. Uh, and we're going to be covering a lot of the show pieces and I believe also showing off some forest uh, stuff. Uh, so it's going to be uh, the last painting stream we do if you've got questions about uh, painting this stuff yourself. Uh, what kind of stuff they're using and all that, uh, that'd be a good place to find out. It's also, the painting streams are also always just really fun and laid back, casual it's conversation. Chill, like yeah, hang out. And uh, then on Tuesday, we've actually got two streams. Uh, the first one is at 1 Eastern, same time as this one's starting. We're going to be doing another big build request stream, Q&As. Uh, we're just going to put him in the center of a bunch of tables with all the pieces on him. And uh, anything you guys want to see. Uh, just go ahead and let us know there. We we're can gonna have dueling, dueling builders. So yeah. Toby and I are gonna be able, we're gonna put up the four by eight table, and just start taking build requests and build like a I don't know, just build, which yeah. will be fun. And then that night at seven Eastern, uh, Stefan, our founder, is gonna be running a game. Uh, it's called Searching for Jerry. In search of in Jerry. search of Jerry. They have yeah. to find the ancient druid across hidden in the forest to find the thing i don't know it'll, it'll be uh luke gygax is playing and david baxter and um i don't know it's gonna be wacky that's all i know it's, it's gonna and, be a wild ride and that'll be first edition as well A D and d old yeah. school yeah and then yeah uh, people still play and then on wednesday we've got our big finale countdown stream starting at seven we'll just be streaming until the uh campaign ends celebrating with you guys talking reflecting on things maybe doing some builds and if if you've got any ideas on what you'd like us to do to take this thing home let us know which we're uh, it's kind of a blank canvas right now yeah it's one of the things we haven't had uh, <laughs> 
we're we're just trying to handle things as they come we're up. One day at a time. We're like we're way like to tomorrow or what's that? That's Wednesday. That's a long ways away. Build an untamed alternative. <laughs> yeah, Russ, do you have any ideas of what we should do to close out the uh, the campaign cool, uh, on camera? Oh, thousands. I'll tell you about them after the stream. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're already planning to reveal the unicorns there, so it's not. Uh, oh, we already got that wrapped up. <laughs> it's already in the chat. I'm not starting it. Um, yeah, so those are the those are the streams. Build an untamed alternative. Could be make a build combining all Kickstarter stuff. We might. We'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll have we'll have time at some point to uh, put it together. But if there's anything you want to see, uh, either hit us up here or in the Discord, and uh, close out this one by revealing what you want to do next Kickstarter. We need a break before we can decide on and announce the next Kickstarter for sure. Why are we? Uh, wah. Yeah, we can't do that right now. <laughs> no. But, we got. We just switched. Yeah. Anything else that we have going on? I think that's it, right? Uh, I think so. News? We I have. We, oh. just, we just hit the spore claw stretch goal, didn't we? Or is that the one? Is no, spore claw is two point nine. Two point nine. We're, so we're creeping up there. Um, we have. Uh, we've released all the add-ons as of yesterday, with the exception of a couple of small ones, based on things that we unlock, which will go in there. But you should be able to start planning your pledges now. That being said, we're, we'll add a couple of things in the pledge manager depending on how how much we fund in the next four days. Um, so there'll, be, there'll still be some other stuff, you know, but right now this is all that's gonna be in the campaign, so you can figure your pledges out based on that. And uh, I think that's what we have. We put up a photo gallery, we have video galleries going up, we have sample pledges pages going up today. Toby's frantically building out all these things so you can sort of see, hey, if I got $500 for the forest, what, you know, what does that cover, what does it look like? So we got all that cooking. And uh, I don't know. It'll be in the update. Any other updates? It'll be in the update. Cool. Should we? Uh, should we get crazy? I think it's everything. Let's get crazy. All right, Russ, you ready to get crazy? Oh, I'm always ready to get crazy. I, I don't believe that. I would. <laughs> all right. So so first of all, before we uh, talk about sort of where we are right now, where did you come from? Like, how do you like? Who are you? Where did you? Uh, you know, how did you start sculpting? How did you? End up at Steamforged. What? Oh, you're at Steamforged. Wow. I don't know. Give us yeah. a Yeah. Okay. So, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, I'm Russ. Uh, I'm the lead sculptor at Steamforged Games. Uh, I've been with them now for about five years, and I've been sculpting uh, for about ten years. Uh, and I was a I was a school teacher, uh, and I did sculpting and modeling as a hobby, and I just kind of fell into it by accident. Um, How? I had a <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I, I I had friends who worked in the video game industry, and we were going through a school inspection, which was pretty hard, and they were directing stuntmen uh, doing mocap combat for one of the Call of Duties, and they were telling me about this over dinner, and I was like, man, I need a better job. So um, I taught myself how to sculpt, and uh, I was going to go into video games, and then I just carried on teaching for a wait, while. Wait, wait, wait. And... You just glossed over the, I taught myself how to sculpt. Like, what do you... <laughs> Like, well, there, there was a lot of early mornings and a lot of late nights and a lot of Google and a lot of YouTube. So you were um, on, on a three D on Maya or something or what? Like, I, I, yeah. Well, I started on I started out with Maya and then quickly uh, binned it off in favor of Blender because yeah. it was free. Um, and then I got into ZBrush and never really looked back. So like you were um, getting up at five in the morning because like school starts. Yeah. So should be there at like seven. So you were getting yeah, up. Yeah, I do like, like I do like five o'clock start. Do two hours get to school for eight, teach till five, come home, do another three, four hours, go to bed, rinse and repeat, do that for like eight or nine months. Um, uh, yeah, and then I basically, I had a friend, we went out one evening and he he bet me a pint of beer that I couldn't sculpt miniatures. So I was like, it can't be that hard. Let's give it a go and see Wait, what happens. So what were you sculpt? So you were doing, you were modeling stuff for video games initially? Yeah, like so I was, I was doing like everyone and... does, like making like bad copies of Gears of War monsters and that kind right. of thing. <laughs> um, you know, big guns and tanks, yep. all, the, all the stuff that everybody puts in their portfolios. Um, and then, yeah, me, me and my friend Chris, we went, we went to a bar and had a drink and came up with this idea for doing, he wanted to do like an alternative World War II game. So we wrote a game, and I sculpted the miniatures for it, and it was called um, Conflict 47, uh, which then Warlord Games picked up, um, who make Bolt Action. 
Um, so they published that, and then I got a gig off that doing... I did all of the launch miniatures for Acton Cthulhu, the World War Two yeah. Call of Cthulhu game that launched Modiphius. Um, I know Chris and the guys really well there. Uh, and from there, um, I knew the guys that... Matt and Rich, who founded Steamforge, I knew them from being in the same sort of groups of like painters and gamers that they were in. And they, they were like, yeah, we got this idea for this kind of fantasy soccer game. And I was like, I don't think it's for me, to be honest, guys. I'm not really into, I'm not really into sport. And they were like, no, 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 go with it. It'll be worth it. So I, I said, I do a few sculpts and I saw the artwork and it looked great. And, um, that was, that was Guild Ball, which, which launched Steamforged. And next thing I know I've done, I think I've done two, over 270 Guild Ball characters. It's some crazy wow. high number like that now. Um, and then along the way, I've done, you know, I've done Critical Role, I've done Doctor Who, uh, Dark Souls, Resident Evil. It just keeps coming. I mean, we just, you know, we're, we're about to start shipping uh, Horizon Zero Dawn to people. So you've kind of, it's your your video game aspirations are kind of being realized yeah. through this, like you're getting to do Resident Evil came, creatures. Yeah, for, but it all came interesting. full circle. It all came full circle. And then, you know, the guys at Steamforge have been amazing in terms of, like, I thought, you know, when I started out, I was just going to sculpt, um, like, you know, be a sculpting gun for hire. But they've really encouraged me to sort of develop and nurture my own ideas and contribute to a lot of stuff. So um, Epic Encounters, which we can talk about in a bit, I've, you know, me and my team have got to basically do all of the design work for that. And then... Uh, people may know Dungeons and Doggies and Animal Adventures, which was uh, a project that I did with um, April Prime, who's this amazing concept artist who um, who contributed uh, a load of really cool yes. art recently. Um, she did Momo for, for our new book. Um, yeah, for yeah, people so... who don't know about the uh, the Animal Adventures in Gullet Cove, do you want to tell them about the the premise? It's really fun, and it's a cool Kickstarter. Which you can't, of course, you can't back it right now, right? Where you're in, uh, you're waiting no, for we're... fulfillment, but yeah, we're we're in the fulfillment phase for February, but yeah. So this is quite a good. I, I've told this story so many times, but it is quite a good story. So I was setting up a new D and D campaign, and um, I can sculpt. I, you know, I I can sculpt quite tidily, but I am a terrible two D artist. I can't draw for toffee. Um, and I wanted some art done for my game, so I put a tweet out saying basically. Uh, hey, I'll swap you. I'll do your sculpt and I'll get it 3D printed if you'll do me some character art for my D&D campaign. And that's a April, great, that's a great deal, right? Like, I thought so. Yeah. Um, and so the first person who came back to me was April, and she said, "Yeah, I'll do it. Here's my portfolio." And her work was amazing. Uh, and then the character that she wanted me to sculpt for her for her D&D game was a golden retriever dressed as a wizard with a wizard's hat on, casting mage paw with a wand that <laughs> looked like a paw. bone. Yeah. And I just I just saw it and went, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen ever. And so that was um, that was the genesis of Dungeons and Doggies, right? Because that character Dungeons was it. Yeah. Yep, that's Cornelius, the wizard who's in Dungeons and Doggies. And so we very quickly got very excited about coming up with 12 different dogs, one for every class in the in the 5th edition Player's Handbook. And uh, then the guys at Steamforge said, this is amazing, this needs to be a full project, you know, because we were going to do some resin models and put them out. And they were like, no, we'll put, you know, we'll put our production guys on it, we'll hook you up with China, we'll, we'll, get, a, we'll get it so that amazing. if it goes big, it can, we can mass produce. And... Um, yeah, that went amazingly well. We had like 11, 12,000 backers for, for Dungeons and Doggies. It finished, um, the, the very final like hours, minutes of the campaign were uh, as I was flying to Gen Con. So I had um, uh, airplane Wi-Fi and I was watching the numbers come down. <laughs> Were you screaming on the plane? I was. And yeah. the stewardess was like, what's going on? And once I'd explained to her what was happening and she'd figured out, she was like, I'll get you champagne. I'll get you. Yeah, like, you know. that's amazing. And um, the, uh, the head steward went up to first class and got me uh, got me a little tray of canapes to have with my champagne. It was amazing. <laughs> um, in fact, that was the year. That was when I met all of you guys yeah. the first time um, at Gen Con. That was when we first first got to, got to talk to each well, other. Well, a bunch of the folks in the office had backed Dungeons & Dungeons doggies and we're really excited that you're going to be there and uh you came by the booth like we actually couldn't get rid of you you were just kept going uh, by the booth and I, looking at stuff and I you were was like obsessed yeah. i mean i'm such a i'm such a moth you know uh, like bright colors and bright lights and yeah 
I, I the, the booth was just stunning and i was i was more excited than words to, to finally see all the dwarven force and stuff I, it was I think you actually didn't you buy the table display for uh for uh for steamforged or something I, yeah i feel yeah yeah it was it was hilarious we we were going to do <laughs> so a, like we, we talked all about doing it. some hookup and 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 all the rest of it and then my boss who was organizing it had to leave early so i came over and you were like yeah we got all this stuff and i said Okay, out came the credit card, and uh, I ended up having to pay a hundred and fifty dollars uh, extra weight allowance on my luggage and carry uh, four carry-on <laughs> flags of Dwarven Knight. For the <laughs> uh, Like, so I did this international flight, like thirteen hours to get home with like five bags of Dwarven Knight. It was a we cleared the we cleared the table. We had like a, a it was it was like a twenty foot long build of just <laughs> into a bag. It was it was like yeah, and it was like. It was. It wasn't like controlled. It was just like pushing. This, yeah, no. This like, wave of stuff into just, the bags. It's amazing. That was. That was amazing. That was two years ago, huh? That was. That was. Yeah. The, it, it feels the, like a hundred. <laughs> oh, man. This. 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 I don't know. This. This has been a. This year has been a hell of a decade. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So so that was that was Dungeons and Doggies, and since then we've done Cats and Catacombs, and then and that went to um, Animal Adventures. Animal Adventures Gullet Co. Uh oh, you just. Hey, uh, there's Momo. Woo! Momo! For president. Um, so that's the that's the print proof of the book, which is a full. So that's a full campaign setting. It it plugs into existing campaigns, or you can use it in your own game um, as just to launch a campaign. All five E rules for cats and dogs, and um, I'm really proud of this book. We've had an amazing teamwork on it. The art's amazing. The writing's amazing. The miniatures are, are great. Um, and it's... cool, like you have the the radicalism, radicalism. Yeah, radic... the radicalism. Like... This huge three-headed rat monster. It's like huge. Lives in the sewers. It's like it is yeah. huge. It is a gen... it is a genuinely massive model. Um, it caused the because uh, obviously when they come to retail, they got to be put in a box, and we had to redesign the box that that one's in because it just didn't fit in the way we got it. But we we kind of known we're, we're getting a reputation at Steamforge for being the guys that make the really big models. Yeah. Um, well, that sort of seems like where the the industry. I feel like everybody's trying to one up themselves with big models, right? Like it's sort of been you know how do you get attention in a in a world of, of miniatures? Like I don't know. Like there's yeah. just so many companies making miniatures. You're like, oh, we'll make it bigger. We'll make it bigger. We'll make it bigger. <laughs> Well, I think it's partly the kind of projects that we've got to work on. I mean, you know, doing Horizon Zero Dawn, the the big robots that are in that, like the, again, at that Gen Con that we met, I, I got the Thunder Jewel there that it's, I spent like eight weeks designing and building. And wow. like end to end, that thing was like 15, 16 inches long. Um, it's a it's an enormous piece of kit. Um, and the, the Stormbird uh, model, again, is even bigger than that. I think it's like 18 inch wingspan. Um, uh, it's It's a huge model. Um, but the people will be able to see those soon because they're starting to ship in, I think it's October. Woo. Um, yeah, the, that, that game has so many supplements. We have a photograph of our lead designer for that game and we've stacked all of the boxes up next to him and they are the, basically the same height that he is. Um, it's crazy. Um, but that was a, that was an amazing project. Uh, I love to rise in. What's the, what's the coolest thing that you've sculpted, uh, well at Steamforged? Oh think? wow, that's such a hard question. Right? Because I mean, it's like asking me who yeah. you know, which my who's my favorite dog. Um, because like each All right, well, what's so I have it is what, what's something what's what the thing you're most proud of? Like what was the craziest challenge that like, you didn't think you could pull it off, and it was like, like... technical challenges. Um, Horizon would be up there because you know those robots are not designed uh, with reality and physics and being made out of plastic in mind so i think technically they'd be they'd be up there i mean artistically um obviously guild ball represents an enormous amount of uh of work it's a big body of work but um the new ranges that we're working on for epic encounters i'm really proud of because that's a range where the sculpting team got to lead the design process so we've you guys... really got to do you want to tell them what Epic Encounters oh, is? Oh, sure, for yeah. This is, um, it's absolutely. a really cool, uh, it's, a, it's a great idea. So this was um, this was something that we'd kind of been gestating for quite some time um, before we, we got, it, got it into a, 
into a project that we wanted. But basically, what Epic Encounters is is it's it's a uh, exactly what it says on the box. It's an epic encounter in a box. So it's a collection of really cool miniatures plus the battle mats plus. Um, it's a whole write up. There's like a whole. Yeah, it's it's more than just an encounter. It's got adventure hooks and it's got uh, ways of running the monsters. Um, it's just it's just designed to be this complete out of the box package that you can put on the table and get like really really good evenings kind of uh, combat content out of it for your your D and D group. Um, but and and then at and the cool core, minis. It's like a whole. Oh, it's yeah. like a, It's a whole bunch of cool minis and like yeah. yeah. So at the core of each set is a really cool set of miniatures. So like the first set that we've got coming out, there's there's two boxes in a set. So the first uh, two box set is uh, a kobold, a tribe of kobolds, and um, a red dragon. And again, talking about big miniatures, the red dragon is like a, a one foot wingspan, enormous <laughs> thing on a massive pile of gold. Um, big red plastic dragon, big pile of gold, uh, uh, like metallicized gold on its base. Um, yeah, it's it's a phenomenal piece of kit. That was designed by Tom, um, one of my fellow sculptors, and it, he knocked it out of the park. But what's been great about that project is just being able to really get in there and explore, like with the kobolds. So we've got like kobold assassins, and we've got um we've got these big fat um, sort of volcanic looking basilisks, and they've got kobold handlers with chunks of meat on sticks, kind of, <laughs> like driving them into battle. And we've got like winged kobolds and ah. Oh, it's it's great to just be to be able to really dig into the uh, to the lore of a of a culture and, and develop it out like that. World build it and do the lore and make a whole yeah. like, it's a thing. It's not just a one off creature. You're like well, I'm going to make this I mean, whole little collection of stuff that I've makes sense a, with a story and uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've been a D and D player and a, and a and a DM for a lot longer than I've been working at, at sculpting. So you know, world building and and coming up with cool ideas and like making them happen is is amazing and it's like with Gullet Cove and with this it's like I get to be is this the best job in the world because I basically get to be yeah. a games master coming up with a new campaign and then be given all of these amazing resources to make it happen like his team of artists and a team of graphic designers and a team of sculptors just go go nuts like you know who wouldn't want to do that well the 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 bonkers thing that you guys did for this am I allowed to talk about the 3D you made like the whole environment and un- oh yeah because you know, like, um, I mean we've got that out on our social media it's it's yeah. outrageous like uh so yeah so Tom um and Holly two of our two of our in-house sculptors are trained in a variety of 3D tools and so yeah we built um full fully immersive 3D environments using the Unreal Engine um so the same engine that you know Gears of War and a lot of modern video games are built in hello what? Uh, we're here sorry i had a, i had strange feedback it's all fine um, <laughs> you heard voices telling you to do something i, I did show I did, the yeah. dragon show the <laughs> dragon <laughs> so yeah we built these amazing 3d environments to make all the maps out of but we've also then been able to like if you go to um the steam forged uh, facebook or our youtube channel we've actually made like whole video sequences like taking you into the environments that the characters live in that you'll get the maps of um as fully immersive 3d videos it's uh because you it's, have it's you've already model. made these characters in 3d yeah. and then you made the environment in 3d so like well let's just put some lights in there just put it drop together, them in yeah. for the, car- the camera and it's yeah. like it's awesome it looks really cool it looks really cool it's it's super cool so um one more before we uh before we go to start looking at this this uh, dragon that you put together for us, um, I was going to ask you about your your workflow. Um, sure, but it's like you've never done analog sculpting, right? So you've you you've been in strictly three yeah. D. So what is your? I was going to ask sort of what the difference between analog and three D was for you, but if, since you're only in three D, like what's your, what is your three D workflow like? So um, I mean, I've done a little bit of like you know like everyone has like sticking an extra head on a character or filling in some belts but i've never sculpted a miniature from scratch in in um physical media and i'm in awe of anyone that can do that i think it's an amazing skill set um, there's no undo and there's no copy and paste <laughs> right yeah i've got it and, and like you know I, when i work on something i can make it this big on the screen to do an eyeball you know, yeah. you know. um so i always it's fascinating watching the different people on my team work because my approach is very 
um, I, I hybridize between like pure sculpting and working on the screen with almost like a digital clay and then a more like traditional modeling approach where I'll build shapes using polygons and, and I'll switch between a modeling tool like Maya or Blender or, or uh, Modo and then I'll come into ZBrush and I'll bring those parts in and sculpt on them. But then we've got Tom on our team and he never leaves ZBrush. He can do everything entirely wow. within the ZBrush tool set. So, and uh, I used to work with a guy called Dave. He does a lot of sculpting for Privateer Press. And he, again, he sits entirely inside ZBrush and only uses like two tools to get everything done. So um, Different tools for different artists. Let's see. Yeah, it's one of the things I love about it is the flexibility of the workflow. Um, you know, like a anyone who, who's interested in taking up uh, digital sculpting, uh, I would encourage them to have a go because there's a free version of ZBrush these days. Um, and you can make that workflow fit your way of thinking and, and your artistic sort of approach to things. You know what we could do? Let's uh, let's bring up the still, the still, uh, the concept art. So we, we dumped some concept art in your lab and said, okay, Russ. Yeah. So we first we said, hey, we want to do something together because you guys are kind of, you're like our sister company across the sea, a very similar size, a lot of the same mentality, a lot, like there's a lot of, uh, nice parallels. We really wanted to do something, and we had this little window. And you're like, you know, you had like a sort of the perfect window between projects. You're like, yeah, we got some bandwidth to work on a thing. Um, so you said, uh, all right. So here's here's this concept art, and uh, so then what happens? You look at this, and what like what's the what's the process? Okay, so I, I can see it on my other monitor, so I'm kind of turning off to one side. Uh, I'm not ignoring the camera. I promise. Um, so when I look at this, the first thing I'm thinking is I'm going to break this down into forms because one of the things that you can do digitally is I can break this model up a bit like layers in Photoshop into individual elements. So I can have just the claws or just a wing or what have you. So I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, so I'm going to build the head as a single element. I'm going to build probably the neck through the tail as an element. I'll build each wing as an element, I'll build each leg as an element, and then we'll bring all of those elements together um, for the final model. And one of the key things that we discussed when we originally were talking through this concept art is the use of the repeated shapes yeah. to create all of the armored elements. You were and excited for that, which I was like, man. I was. Because Crystal yeah. put all these spikes everywhere. Like, you know, Crystal is like the queen of spikes and spines and like, that's the yeah, thing. I was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, man, this poor sculptor. You're just like, man, no, this is great. Like, I'm just going to run a spline through all these things. And like, that's it. Yeah. This is like one of the things that you can do really well digitally is um, anything that's going to have a repeated element. Like, you know, I can do chain mail in like 10 minutes because it's like three button pushes. Um, and it's the same here. I could create a spline that followed the shape, follow, create that curve. Um, I can populate the, the armor plates down it, uh, change their shape, change their size. One of the things that the real challenge then, once we've got those basic things laid out, is to then take that from feeling very digital and almost mechanical and and kind of sterile and giving it the life and giving it the the yeah. organic flow and bringing the character to life and that's the step that i think we probably spend more time on i mean i think when you and i were working on this i think we had the basic elements blocked out in three or four days you know we, we brought together our, our core parts of the model and then we probably spent another 12 days polishing and refining and making sure that we evoked the the narrative and the story and the character that we wanted um, this model to tell. Yeah. So I, I threw a lot of I threw a lot of notes your way. <laughs> yeah, but that was cool because you know we were both approaching this like every every time you work with somebody new, it's a new relationship. It's, yes. It's a, you know, it's a dance, isn't it? It's a creative dance. It's a dialogue, and we're we're learning our parts in it. Yep. And one of the things I love about working uh, with lots of different people is everybody has their own sensibilities, and it keeps everything fresh. And it means you you don't you, you don't end up just repeating the same things. You find new ways to express things, and you you surprise yourself with what you do. And I think you know the end result was uh, was worth worth the journey. How would you uh, how would you describe the Dwarven Forge? Uh, like, what's our approach? Gavin, you know, having been on the receiving end of it, like, what's it like? Uh, uh, I, I, lo I loved your notes because they, they were all about evoking, they were all about evoking feelings. They were very emotive. You know, you never said, right, sharpen this and make this 12 millimeters longer. It was always, 
it, you know, imagine a, a female tiger walking through the woods ready to strike. You know, it was all about the story. It was all about the evoking those atmospheric qualities. Um, and so then we got to, uh, I got the artistic freedom to take what you were saying and go, right, how, how do I want to respond to this? And I loved that because it was, it wasn't you telling me what to do. You were telling me what you wanted to express and giving me the freedom to figure out how I wanted to make that happen. And I thought that was a really nice way to do things. Well, that's, uh, I've, I've over it's I've developed that over the years of a combination of working with actors and working with an enormous variety of different artists through film and whatever and it's always better if you can if you can be uh don't be prescriptive don't tell people how to accomplish tell them what you want to accomplish and yeah because because the chances are that, you know the the that the artist whatever they're a, they're a specialist in what they're doing they're gonna have a better idea than I do but I say hey I want it to feel dangerous or feel feminine or feels like it's slinking up on me or say like then they can translate that into a thing and that's it, you know, like that was always I was so excited because I give a thing and then I'd come back and like yeah you made it like you accomplished that you know that emotion and I don't know I don't know what tricks you did but you did it and it's <laughs> like because I could I wouldn't be able to tell you how the tricks to do it. But I, like there it is, so it's it works. No, really that, well. and, and that was great because I mean, having done this, you know, working with Steamforged, uh, I get to do some art directing, and obviously on Go at Cove, I was working with a lot of artists, and I, I kind of adopted your approach there of trying to give the artist as much ownership and as much freedom as possible because you're always going to get something better. Then yeah. you can't just treat people like they're an extension of your own hands. You've got to give them that opportunity to do what they do best. Exactly. And uh, so I really appreciate it. I mean, it was a lot of fun to work on this thing. Are you telling me? I, this is awesome. So let's see. Let's see. You have uh, some time lapse, right, of uh, of the process. Uh, I believe we that's have, at so. your end. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hit play, Russ. Come on, hit play. <laughs> what are you doing? Do you want to just there? let this run, or, and then I'll talk about it afterwards, or, or do you want me to talk over it? How do you want this to go? I don't know. What's like? What, okay. So uh, this is me doing the head, and right. I just started with a ball. And this was uh, this is actually three different sessions um, uh, linked together. So we'll see some jumps. So this was our first session where it's we were just crazy. exploring the shapes. I should point out I don't sculpt this fast. This is a uh, this is about six or seven eight times normal speed, whatever it works out as. That's crazy. Oh wow, the way the eyebrow ridge came in. <laughs> <laughs> Like, so yeah, this is just blocking out. What you can't see is I've got on my other monitor, I've got the picture of the dragon and yeah. I've zoomed in on the head and I've uh, I've aligned it so that I've got it kind of perfectly side Wait, on. Can you pause it, Chris, or there's no way to pause it? Uh, I can't pause it, no. Okay. okay, so we've jumped forward now. This is the second big sculpting wow. session where I've added a few little spikes and details to give myself a more of a sense of what we want and now we're starting to explore some of the shape separation. Um, so we know that we're going to have these bony elements underneath the skin elements. So we start to look at the different, wow. um, the, the different kind of textural qualities that we can bring to those areas. And this was um, the, Crystal did this cool thing where the flesh was coming off and the nose was decaying. And you did that yeah, in a really I, cool I way. I love the sort of sense of decay and and again. So we've jumped to our third session now, where we're just you know starting to refine some of those sub shapes um, and. Um, clarifying different elements that wow. we want to really sort of emphasize uh, so, just testing textures how how much like how long would you guess that was was that like three minutes of work or three days of work like what um we... uh start to finish this head probably is about eight or nine hours wow uh, something around and that's that. That's just the head. That's like a, that's just the head. Yeah. You know, that's. But actually, I mean, I think probably. It's 20, uh, 20 millimeters of uh, of. Yeah, coverage. this is probably where we put the most work, though, because you know, everything about the character. Yeah, the head is everything. Oh, we're back to the start. Everything is there in the head. I think we've we've looped. Well, and that's yeah, and yeah. that's what um you know same crystal with her art same thing starts with the head like is tries to tries to break the character with the head. And kind of the the whole rest of the character follows from there. All right, what's yeah. the next uh, what's the next session? Oh. Uh, I don't think I think we've only got the uh, oh, yeah, head. Okay. Oh. Um, unfortunately, All right, we, so uh, then so then let's um, you want to show the uh, you want to show the model, the actual three D. Uh, do we have the three D model? I've I've got You've I've got, got, got the end. should we I've go got to the your... sculpt on my end? I can share my screen. Yeah. Okay, this is where we. 
we test my ability to work um, to yeah. work. Drum Skype. roll. It worked earlier. We got it. It'll happen. We believe okay. in you. All right, I've, I've hit the Woo! button. Boom. Okay. Wow. So this is our final. This is our final dragon. Um, and this me, was how me... long? How many sessions? Like how? How long was this? You were guessing what it was like. It was two weeks. So or I think in total I worked on this for about ten days. So we're looking wow. at 70, 75 hours worth of work probably. Wow. Um. Yeah, so what, you could see what, one what of the things that was. Yeah, you go. You go. I was just going to say, one of the things that was really um, exciting for us when we were doing the back and forth was evoking the the sense of that 2D art, yeah. but in this, in a fully 3D realized way, so that, you know, we were getting the same feel from every angle. Um, so that was, that was quite an exciting uh, process. And then if we zoom in, you know... Uh, getting in and you can see all of the all of the small details that we've put in like the decay and the corruption and yeah it's uh, a I know lot you were, of details you were very keen to sort of make sure we were evoking the dragon's heritage with the big spiny frills around the back which it was a really cool you know a lot of really cool little things that we well, were able to and work that was to. an interesting addition from originally crystal didn't have the frill connectors he had the ridges but not the frill yeah. And I was worried about it not feeling like a green dragon, so we brought back the uh, the so frill we brought that element the in. Yeah, um, and I mean, like as we were discussing um, before we came on the stream, and I think it's it's important that people are aware of this. Like even now, although like artistically we're happy with this, we're not finished because we've got to go through the whole process of making this ready for manufacturing and production, and that's a whole another. Oh set man. Of the, smaller processes that we go through. The factory had an absolute heart attack. Like they, were, <laughs> like, they were, we got very strongly worded emails. Like it was, it, they, it was like, yeah, they, they were, they got the SDL file and they're like, oh, they were, they're losing their mind a little bit. But like, in a way, like, if, um, well, just, if anyone's interested in that stuff, if uh, if anyone ever gets an opportunity to jump jump onto the Gullet Cove Kickstarter, you can't back it anymore. But the latest update, I've actually done a full breakdown of from this stage all of the different things that we do to get from here to a uh, manufactured plastic model um, and all of the different um, modifications that we have to make. So uh, I, I, that's all up on up on the uh, up yeah. on the Gullet Cove page. Blast us out a link. Maybe Chris can yeah, find a link. Yeah, I'm grabbing yeah. that link right now. Yeah. So what are so what are some of the what were some of the challenges? Do you remember some of the trickier spots on this gal? Yeah. So I mean, I can't remember if I've merged this or if this is all still. Yeah. It's mostly so. This model is 43 different elements at the moment. Oh, um, save it before you do anything. <laughs> uh, we're all safe. So uh, this is what I mean about the idea of Photoshop layer. So you can see each of these elements wow. are are separated. So this is, you know, just that head there. And having seen that that animation of the ball, you can actually see the original ball with the two pieces pulled out that became yeah. our horns there. Uh, and then all these additional spines added in. Some of the challenges that we faced were um, capturing the qualities that you wanted, um, like making sure we had enough tension in the arms and enough oh. sense of intent. Pose um, and tension. There was a lot of trying to find the... the... Yeah, that there's there, Crystal's art was really like there was you know it was mid leap and there was everything was all the muscles were tense. It was that tiger in mid leap thing. It's that yeah, that feline kind of grace yeah. and um, elegant aggression is the way I would sort of describe it, and that's quite hard to evoke in what is ultimately going to be a, a lump of plastic. So yeah. that was our big challenge, and one of the things that we also talked about a lot was the. The physical challenge of a model this size being up on a single foot yep. um, because obviously you know we have to think about things like gravity and the strength of the materials we're working in so we designed the tail uh, in such a way as to ensure that the model will be nice and, and rigid well you had um, that great idea of oh, you're like well if I connect the tail to the leg it creates this triangle up above absolutely that help so we up. get this kind of yeah. yeah we wanted that sort of triangular sense of connection to the base to give it lots of stability and then i remember we, we worked a lot about how to get that beautiful shape that 
uh, the wings have in the artwork to work in 3D. So you can see that shape is is working well here. Yeah. But several several of our test versions, you could turn the model to a specific angle and it was covering the face or one wing was extending too far. So there was quite a lot of back and forth to make sure that, you know, from any angle that we turned it, there is a sense of balance to that uh, to the shapes and the proportions that we're seeing. Well, that's the hard um, part, right? You draw a drawing of a, a, a 2D photo of like and making a nice composed photo is easy, but like having a thing that has a nice composition from all directions is woo. Yeah, I mean, there is always a level of interpretation. Like, uh, I love the concept art, and I love working with concept artists. They they evoke things on the on the page that I could never come up with, like if I was just sculpting from scratch. But there is always going to be some translation and some some modification and changes that need to be made. I mean, you know, the, there'll, there'll be something to do with like a trick of perspective or a trick of distance that's working yeah. on the page that you can't you can't fake in 3D. It has to actually, you know, work completely consistently. Well, some and things so, don't work in three dimensions or, you know, it, it will look fine to you, but it doesn't it just doesn't read in three dimensions. Or, I yeah, I mean, like. You know, in the artwork, we have this lovely shape to this 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 forearm at the front here, her her left forearm. Uh, but like, how far out did we make that? How wide did yeah. we bring it? What was the angle from the front? You know, we went backwards and forwards on how closed off or how open those arms were, and those are all decisions that we're making just because we're able to see it from multiple angles. Uh, I mean, technically as well, getting all of these armor plates to work and interlock. Because I can lay, I, I could lay them out quite quickly digitally, but then making sure they they are uh, layered in an organic way and they felt like they followed the flow of the form and they they supported the the shape and line of action that we wanted to follow was quite challenging. In fact, there was an entire uh, uh, tertiary set of spines and and additional armor plates that we ended up removing because we wanted to open that dragon out and, and be able to see more of it. And at one point realized... she got, she got cluttered at one point. There was, she did. There's yeah. such and a we... thing as too many spikes. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, she, she's, she's pretty, she's a pretty strong cheerleader for the concept of more is more, but we discovered, <laughs> we discovered there was a line. <laughs> yeah. There's a, we, we sometimes, you know, and I like to push the envelope and go too far. So then you can come back, you know, when you, cause you don't know where, like there's art, you don't know when enough is enough and where so sometimes you have to push it and break it and then say, okay, okay, we did go too far. Let's, let's yeah. pull it back a little bit. And I think, you know, like one of the, one of the great things for me was obviously having worked on the Epic Encounters, the, the huge red dragon that we've, we've got uh, coming out in that set meant that I was able to approach this knowing <laughs> some of the challenges that we would face but then this was an entirely new set of challenges and a whole new curveball and um <laughs> i'm really excited to see the final version i can't wait to, yeah to do get, you want to, to get... uh we can, i can show it to you right now you want to see oh it? man I, I am i am super hyped well, for this and this is i'll i'll, I'll stop my screen share yeah. as the as my screen saver comes on what's going on uh where are we ba -ba 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 -ba. Now, this is where I have to be careful not to accidentally end the call. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be epic. And here I it is, Russ. So boom, he's gone. Is it? <laughs> so this is obviously, this is not um, adjusted for manufacturing yet. So this is literally a straight printout of what you sent. Um, and we're going to have to we have to put a base on her and we'll have to thicken the wings a little bit. And there's a bunch of little, the spines won't be quite this sharp in Dwarvenite. Uh, Chuck was worried. He's like, that people are going to hurt themselves when they... Uh, when they touch that model let's put on a little backlight for her i think if, if anyone ever went to like early 90s games workshop stores when they had all the goblin spearmen and put your hand on them and like instant acupuncture oh my goodness look at that the, so hamster painted <laughs> her up and uh oh woo. yeah we go around i mean Come on, guys. Yeah, it should be uh, good. So this is the point where we have to say to everybody, hey, we need to, uh, you know, we can't, we've got to break Cavern Steep, which was 3.3-something 3 .3 um, before we can get to her. So this is the big push. It's like, this is going to be an expensive mold. Like, we can't just, we can't just throw this thing out there. So we need, um, you know, this is where we need everybody to push to get uh get this thing out uh for the tail end of this thing so i think you know this should be hopefully the last day we can we can break through and uh 
get her out there because she really is something. I mean, yeah. you, you 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 guys know how to make my work look good. Thank you. Well, that's it, phenomenal. It's, it's, you know, it's a huge team process across the boards from from concept all the way through the end, and uh, yeah, I'm really I'm pretty excited. She's uh, it's our first Storm Forge Dragon. I'm so I mean like. I'm, I feel really blessed that you trusted me to to be the person that helped deliver that for you. I, I mean, it was a it was a leap of faith on your part because you know we'd not we had known each other for a while, but we hadn't worked together. So yeah, well, I figured you know it was like it, it, you guys seemed awesome, and it was like well, either we pushed really hard and just completely just rupture this relationship or this cements it. Like it's it was like a great yeah. like. <laughs> Make or break, like, let's yeah, see what happens. Yeah, trial by fire. Yeah. We'll go on. Let me see if I'm getting closer with this camera. Uh, so it was like, you know, we'll just uh, we'll go go for broke. And uh, I think it, it worked out. And I'm super excited. Now, this will hopefully get us uh, hopefully get it, help get us over the finish line. And I mean, we're already way over the finish line, but, you know, we want to get to enough to actually uh, make this thing, which would be awesome. Can we get any closer? I need a. I should have got a new longer lens. Look at that. Wow. The detail on that. Woo! Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, she's. Uh, yeah, you did a. You did a fine job, Russ. Thank you. The coloration as well. Brilliant color choices. The trying to take the sh the green dragon and and uh, give her some shadow. Uh, she's been stuck yeah. in the shadow fell for two thousand years. And it's, it's really evocative. It works so nicely. It's a little. Uh, it feels kind of like the classic uh, old. Uh, you know, like not the red box covers. The one that's. Um, what was the was it Errol Otis? Who was the guy that did those those really kind of psychedelic. Uh, the psychedelic D and D art, uh, early eighties. I don't like, remember. My my yeah. red box was the one that had the Larry Elmore. Yeah, it. yeah, it was the pre red box. Um, which yeah, no, that the Elmore art like I stared at for thousands of hours. Like those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are just like life changing. He's fantastic. Uh, um, cool. Well, let's let's um let's ask. Uh, let's see if the chat has any questions. Uh, uh, sure. There's what been a couple. Light uh, up. First off, everybody. As soon as it was revealed, everybody is losing their minds. Like both through the through <laughs> the through the time lapse process, through the uh, concept, of, like through all of it, people have been wildly impressed. Uh, yeah. There's been a couple people saying that it reminds them of xenomorphs. Uh, yeah, bit, yeah. There's a little. The yeah, I can see that. Yep. Um, that's that's a compliment. A little HR Giger coming out of you. It's uh, never a bad thing to be yeah uh, compared to. Uh, people are wondering about the scale, if it's young dragon size. Actually, do you want me to grab a mini to put next to it? Or... Uh, yeah. Okay, grab, I'll, uh, I'll go grab one here. Let's show. Um, someone else has put a banana next to it for scale. Uh, a banana. Gonna... <laughs> Is that uh, a standard... How big versus the rabbit mini? Okay, I'll go grab the rabbit. Um, I need to yeah, bottle it. Scale I, and... I, I need to have a digital Ooh. banana that I can put on screen at, at will. Yeah. An imperial uh, with uh, inches for... Yeah. It. Although I, I I much prefer metric. I I have full disclosure. I like there's such a good solid logic to it. My problem is I can't think. I can do it at the small scale like millimeters and centimeters, but I can't like I don't know like I don't know how big. I mean I know what a meter is, but then like gets like beyond that like I don't know if someone said twenty meters. I just. My brain, I, well, I just haven't trained to work like that, but I wish I could. I, because... I'm, I'm in the UK where we still are completely hybridized. So I, I was taught metric at school, but like all of our road signs are in miles. All of our cars run in miles per gallon. Um, all of our ruler, all of our like uh, tape measures are metric down one side and imperial down the other. So Aye. I'm, I'm happy to work in both. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, how big is she compared to the Wyvern Mini? Oh. Well, good thing you just ran out. The wyvern was right where you were. Okay, on the, the shelf, the sacred shelf. All right, we'll be right back. Yeah. And the, the sacred shelf where we keep the, the, the one-ofs that are only, like, you know, we don't have, uh, like, there's only one of these dragons. So she's on the sacred shelf. I'm going to put a die that's white. You can see it. Yeah, she's a, she's a looker. 
What other? I can't read any. Uh... Do you know what size base she's going to be on? Uh, seventy-five millimeters. So, um, it's about three huge, three inches. Huge, huge, not gargantuan. Yeah. Uh, because that would the factory would would lose their like that was <laughs> they went together would just they're like come on guys you're that's like, the that's the line in the sand right like, there. It just yeah you can't. You're like, I mean we could, but it would cost us uh, just a bazillion. I don't know. Is that yeah. she's already? I don't have a ruler, but what is that? This is eight and a half. I mean, that wingspan is... Yeah, She's pretty big. Probably seven-inch wingspan or something right now. And, yeah. Uh, will the base be a sculpted base? Um, I th- It would just be a plain circle, I think. Well, the... Okay. What other questions? That's a good question, though. Oh. Uh, the person who... Who sculpted the wyvern? Uh... Drew. That was Drew. He's in chat. So this is the hey, first time. Drew. This, is the first, this is the first time he's seen it. I Wait, mean, they make a lovely camera. couple. Wait, Drew. I sent him pictures of the painted. Uh... Well, first time he's seen it on camera. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, they could totally uh, be a lively couple. Hey, Drew. What's going on, man? No, that that's 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 quite something, isn't it? A lot of it's people are wondering exciting. what they have to do to get it now. Uh, they what? What well, we got it? We have to get past uh, Cavern Steep, which was three point three something. And so, then they're wondering like what pledges it would be in if we if we got it. Oh, uh, we're just gonna have to see how it all pans out. Okay. We'll, uh, something to look forward to in the last last twenty four hours. Oh, you know what I could do too? Let's see if I wait this. Oh, I don't have the. I want to put it on the light puck, show it off, but I. Battery dead. It's all right. No. Uh, what other, uh, what are there, any other questions from the, uh, from the gallery? Uh, it's mostly been people saying that they're very impressed. Uh, is that a color shifting paint on the fin? Uh, there might be a little iridescence. I don't, yeah, I'm not sure if it's just blending paint. Yeah, I think there's some iridescence in the, in the frill, I don't know. They, uh, Hamster and, uh, Aaron have been playing with uh, a lot of uh, these kind of interference colors and neat uh, some neat bits. Yeah, light from the front. Uh, people really? wondering people wondering if it's gonna be dwarvenite or resin. It will be dwarven. Dwarvenite. Yeah. So it'll be indestructible. Yeah. yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah, I wouldn't want to break that many. So it's a good thing it's gonna be in Dwarvenite. Um, Woo Let's see. Yeah, not a lot of questions. People are just really excited. Yay! Are so, interference colors going to be used in the factory painting, or in, uh, is it in, in, interference or the interference that cool iridescence that breaks up? Uh... What oh, about or iridescent? Um, All right. So, should we do something again, Russ? Would you? Uh, would you? Would you? Uh... Would you align yourself with the dwarves yet again? Oh, 100%. Absolutely, I would. I mean, I'd love to. Um, and, Me too. You know, I, I, I'd like this to be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Woo! <laughs> well, friendship's already there. This is the beginning of an well, yeah, alliance. Is... of. Uh... Uh, yeah. And, and, what, um, and what do you have coming up? What are you working on? So... Um... Uh, be personally so we've obviously we've got epic encounters coming out very soon uh we've got a really really crowded couple of months coming up because we've got epic encounters coming out um we've got uh horizon shipping uh the devil may cry board game is shipping um uh, we've got an unannounced very cool internal ip project coming in sometime towards the end of the year i want to say november but please don't quote me on that um that i'm well everything's in pandemic time still so yeah it's so like... who knows um and you guys are going to love that project when i am allowed to show it to you um <laughs> i myself um i've been doing a lot of work uh, recently um with uh sarah thompson the uh, who released the combat re- wheelchair rules yeah. so i've been putting out uh, a bunch of stuff for charity for that so, what do you um, did you sculpt any uh 
what's going on with that? So, so uh, the background, if, if anyone doesn't know about this, uh, I will enlighten you. If you do know about this, I apologize. Um, so Sarah is a very talented um, RPG writer and designer. She worked professionally, uh, but she's also um, she's a, uh, she's disabled. And she represents an organization called Heroes Without Limits, which is a, a large community of uh, disabled people that are into gaming and role playing. And she does a lot of research into uh, representation of disabled people in, in gaming. And she produced a set of 5e compatible rules for a combat wheelchair, which the rules are epic. And um, I, as a child, was a wheelchair user due to a, a, a bone disorder I had when I was younger. And so I was, when I saw these rules, I was super motivated to do what I could to help the cause. So me and uh, my fellow Steamforge sculptors, um, Steamforge basically gave us the thumbs up to go out and create a range of um, wheelchair adventurers, which um, a small company uh, called Strata Miniatures is putting out. And uh, Ooh, do you have any... Them. Oh yeah, I've seen these floating around. These are awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're all over they're, Twitter. They're the yeah. Um, and they've been like people have really, really uh, responded positively to them. And um, the the thing here is we end up we want to do twelve, like I did with the dogs. Yeah. But one the, for the, each the, class. Yeah. One for each class. Yeah. But um, what's made these special for me is um, a big chunk of all of the proceeds is uh being donated to charity so so sarah chose a charity and uh we've already raised um uh, five or six thousand dollars for them so far and it's still going up and up and up um and so hopefully we can continue to a put out some really kick-ass miniatures um i'm really proud like i was a wheelchair using youngster who was into D D, and if i'd had miniatures like this that looked like me at the time i would have been over the moon so well, i'm really life, hoping that it'd be life-changing right it's yeah. so it's like affirming of how, like yeah and uh so we're trying to make those wheelchairs part of the characters and feel like they they're usable things and like yeah. sarah's got some amazing footage of wheelchair archers and wheelchair martial artists and rock climbers wow it's doing phenomenal things in real life that we're trying to translate and i just it, it's really lovely to be helping move a conversation forward and we're seeing hero forge and eldritch foundry and people like that announcing their plans to put options like this into yep. their hit character builders and to know that i've helped in some small way to move that forward i mean i'm standing on the shoulders of giants here because it's because of people like sarah and other disabled creators who are out there you know writing the rules and and going out there and educating and advocating for this stuff that makes it possible for me to be able to contribute this and i'm just delighted that i've been able to do something and um yeah, yeah so these are going to be shipping because uh, like we release them and we plan to do them print on demand strata minis is run by my my wife kate and uh, a close friend of ours and they plan to do them all as print on demand miniatures but the the response has been so overwhelming we've hooked up with a professional miniatures casting company so we're having to ma manufacture them so Woo! they're, they're going to start shipping in September once we get everything uh, we've got that process running and then we'll we've got four more that we're going to announce and then again they'll ship and we'll do the final four and have the set of 12 when's the but next the, when's the next four so the plan out? is we'll 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 reveal those and make them available once this lot ships because we don't want to get people yep. into a situation where they've ordered some and then they want yep. a couple of yep. the others and it gets awkward so we're going to try and keep it nice and clean and nice and easy if you go to the website you can already if you've got your own 3d printer you can buy the stls right away the the money still goes to charity but you can print them at home and people are already painting them up um i'm seeing lots of stuff on twitter for that um but i would like to keep going this like my next yeah. big thing that i want to do is put out a call for disabled sculptors and see if I can bring them on and like let them use the platform that we've got to yes. to get their work out there and, and be part of this. Uh, I think I think that you know uh, this is something. It feels like there's an opportunity to do some real good here, and I really want to push this forward. No, it's amazing, and the details. Like I love the you know the personality you gave to the wheelchairs. So the daggers on the uh, on the yeah, yeah. chair and the lantern so, on the mages. The, the, like. 
So like with the rogues chair, you can't see it in this front image, but she's got two big hoops at the front and then at the back she's got rope. So it's designed so that she can basically set up a repelling system and climb up, you know, wow. there's the hoops at the front, there's rope at the back. She can get it up a wall if she needs to. Um, the dwarf just looks like he's just gonna just mess up anything he comes near. Is he, his legs are tied in so he doesn't fall yeah, out of the um, chair because he's is, going crazy? Is it... Absolutely. This is something, so Sarah did a lot of research um, and these are elements that we've lifted from, I don't know if you guys have ever seen wheel, wheelchair basketball and wheelchair rugby, but it's known as murder ball murder because ball. it's yeah. so violent and so crazy intense. And they often have these straps so that they're not knocked physically out of the out of the chairs because the chairs with the angled in wheels and the low sense of gravity, you know, you're not knocking one over. Um, they're just brutal the way they go at each other. So we've we've lifted ideas from that, and we're working on a ranger at the moment. And there's a U.S. Um, wheelchair uh, professional athlete who's a um, international level archer who's contributing to uh, making sure that the archery that we represent in the Ranger miniature is authentic as possible. Oh, it's, I can't wait to see that. Is that going to be one of the next four? Uh, I think it is. I think that's that's one that Tom's planning to work on after he finishes his current one, which is a... Uh, he's been working on a wizard, and I think he's finished that, so the archer will be the next one he does. Um, and I've just put together a bard, and my next one is, a, is a, going to be a female fighter. So cool. Yeah, it's, I, um, it warms my heart to see this happening. And I had no idea this was, you were involved with this. I saw these all over Twitter, and I didn't know. Yeah. Because there, like, um, there was some stupid, like, there were people were, like, angry about this, right? There was, like, well, some, some nonsense. Ah. There is, there's always, you know, right back to the very earliest days of gaming, there is always someone that wants to say, right, this this is what my game looks like and it can never look like anything else. Yep. Um, and it's, it's fine. But like, you know, my, my, my glib answer to that is always like if somebody engages with the content to tell us that it's terrible and we're, we're ruining D and D, um, that just means more people see it. <laughs> and that yeah. just means that more people get involved yeah. for every one person that has a problem. We get 500 telling us that it's well, the greatest thing ever. And, and here's the thing. You know, if somebody, if somebody stops playing D and D because there's combat wheelchairs, then I don't want them playing D and D. Like, that's great. The game is better for not having that person around. The thing for me is I've had messages and, you know, for every one message, good or bad, I've had, like Sarah is the real hero here. She's done this a hundred times. Yeah. Um, a thousand. But for every bad yeah. message you get, you get an overwhelming number of people, including people saying, you know, uh, finally that like I, I can look at the game and I can see someone like myself and like, yeah. like people saying they have genuinely been emotionally affected by the idea that they feel validated and they feel welcome at the table. I mean, everybody should be welcome at, at a table. That's Absolutely. What the, that's what role-playing is. Yes. And it, it it's a huge thing for me. Uh, I, I could get on a proper soapbox about this, but I won't. But <laughs> everybody is valid. Everybody is welcome. Everybody can be a hero. And, and that's, that's at the core of why we're doing it. Yeah. Oh, it's like, man, I'm so happy for it. I'm going to have to order up some, uh, I didn't know you were casting them. So we'll have to Yeah, order yeah, up yeah. Some we're using uh, DTR, who are an amazing casting company over in Europe. They train all over the world. Um, like, their casting is second to none. I'm really proud to be able to, uh, to be involved with them because um, they're not an easy company to get in with, but they, they wanted to support the project. So they, they found us some space in their production schedule. So, isn't it, uh, isn't it awesome guys. when the, uh, when you, you know, when the industry unites for good and you know you get all these great people doing awesome things like it's just yeah it's good to it's see like the community saying, mobilize you know it's like we said earlier you know we might not be able to save the world but we can make a little bit of it brighter absolutely give people of a couple hours of time where they can just escape and enjoy themselves yeah. and you know be a hero or a villain or a whatever. Um, Absolutely. So I'm looking forward to my D&D group, which is going to be, you know, two people in a wheelchair, a talking cat and three spaniels. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's outrageous. I want to see a picture uh, of the, the minis on some terrain with that one. Oh, Isn't hell it? yeah. I mean, uh, like, I'll get, I, I will, like, when we start shipping, I will make sure uh, some, some come over to you guys. Yeah. Um, cause I would imagine, you know, these guys will look great in, in any yes. Dwarven Forge dungeon. Yeah. 
and we might uh we might have to make some rap uh some new rap pieces to make it all work like that could be cool one of the yeah. funniest things that you've seen people saying is like but how but how do they get like how wide are doors in dungeons suddenly for the first time in D's 40 odd year history how wide a dungeon door is has become really important for some people never mind that half giant barbarian with a grizzly yeah. bear right the goliath and very that just like yeah, parties yeah. To the, thing. the fact that there's a storm giant in the dungeon that must have gotten there somehow or yeah. they, like you know the ogre and what, no like it's, but it's, it's the wheelchair that's barely two feet that's, wide that's the uh that's the real sticking point that's it's, the it's breaking point funny. like it's yeah. just funny. I have a, like just all the reality and, and geometry of a dungeon and how nonsense it all is. Like it's just like it's all made up. Like you can't. It like, is. It is. And just, I've seen like you know it, this has gone on and on on the internet. But there are Sumerian like you know there are ancient pots showing like wheelchairs from like fifth century BC, and it's like yeah. Well, if uh, they've been part of human culture for thousands and thousands of years, this is not controversial stuff. Not at all. Um, Plus, you've just, got magic. You could make like you yeah. got magic. You could do. You could resurrect people. You could make a wheelchair. Um, like it's, it's yeah. a joy to design them. I mean, I've just yeah. finished the bard, and I'm not going to reveal that because that's going out in an article um, uh, in the press. But uh, yeah, I've managed to put like harp strings on the wheels and oh, like cool. like violin f holes in the back and stuff. And yeah, I just I just love the the fun of this, that kind of designing. It's really good fun. Oh man, I can't wait to see him when they come out cool we should uh let's wrap this thing up i got sure, sure, sure. going to do uh unless you have anything else cooking in your world or we have any other burning questions from uh chat we can uh oh. take it on home we did have a couple people who uh asked to see how the dragon looks like perched on top of a escarpment and stuff like that yeah if we wanted to yeah, yeah, do yeah. a couple beauty shots like that go out on some beauty yeah how about this Titans I love that the chat is now discussing like wheelchair designs. That's quite hilarious. Uh, good on them. We've we've got a really great community on Twitch. I, I I like, have to say I've been I've been watching the comments in the background and they just seem like such an amazing group of people. Um, we've, we've got the greatest makes... uh, greatest fans in the world. Bam! Wow! Yeah, that's looking pretty epic. Okay. Yeah, look out for the insert. It's a pot holder. <laughs> all right, here's, all right, and we'll go out on this one, which will be really something to stretch towards. Let's see. If oh, the Oblivion Nexus. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, that's such a cool set piece. Now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. It's got, I'm going to have a hard time convincing people that you didn't show me that ahead of time because they fit together so well. Yeah. Geometry, baby. Really? Let me go this way. Beautiful. Woo! Yeah, that's the thing you want to put like on your desk. Just like the uh, paper weight. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> All right. Well, on that, uh, let's go out on that good note. Uh Russ, thanks for uh, thanks for taking no. the time. Hey, thank, thanks for having me. Hang it's out. Been a blast. And, talk about the process and uh and for working really hard uh on this this beautiful sculpt and making making wheelchairs and making dogs with wizard hats and you know all the wonderful things that we need to make our lives a little brighter it's it, it's a very different world to when i was a teacher i'll tell you that Whoa. um yeah it's been it's been awesome thanks for having me on it's been really good fun and uh good luck with the final days of the campaign i i genuinely Thank genuinely you. want to get one of these in my hands so come on people let's yeah, get well, that line. i think hopefully she'll uh she'll give uh give people to help you know help us push this thing uh through and uh thank you everybody who's been watching thank you for everybody who's been supporting and uh let's get uh let's let's break this dragon out of uh she's trapped in dwarvenite we have to free her like han solo out of the carbonite no uh, get it out there so uh we will see you uh back tomorrow night at 7 p.m and uh in the comments section and on discord and on the forums and on twitter and on facebook and i don't know where else every, everywhere we are so we're around can't wait to hear from you thank you for everything thanks for watching and good night bye, bye.